In this video, I'm walking you through how to do standing forward bend, which is one of my own favorite exercises. I love what it does to my shoulders and my upper body, and it also gives me a bit of a wobble through my legs as well. I have to apologize, my room probably isn't quite big enough to show you this quite in the way that I want to, so bear with me, I'll try and make it as obvious as possible um, from a couple of different angles. So standing forward bend, I'm just gonna quickly show you what the overall exercise looks like. You're kind of putting your hands behind your back like so, you're pivoting from the pelvis, so notice here how I'm like hinging forward at my pelvis and my hips like this, pulling the shoulders back and my legs stay straight and I'm basically hanging out here for a, between a minute and three minutes depending on how it feels and how strong I am and that type of thing. But as ever, there are a bunch of cues that we need to think about. So this is where I'm apologising because you might not see me too clearly. You are going to stand with your feet hip width apart. For most people, hip width apart is significantly uh, narrower than they think. This is not hip width apart. This is more like hip width apart. It's about kind of a, a fist and a half in between. You're making sure that your feet are truly parallel. So your ankles and your toes are different entities within the feet. If you are stood like this with your toes out to your side, to the side, your ankles are hip width apart but the toes are not hip width apart. So that's really crucial because this is an exercise that creates change from the foot upwards. And if the foot isn't in the right position, you won't create the change upwards in the way that the exercise wants you to. So ankles are hip width apart, you pivot around the ankle so that the feet are parallel and it's like you're standing on train tracks and if you have the train tracks under your feet they would run through the middle of your ankle through into the middle of your second and your third toe on both feet so do not let the toes like spread out wide this is how it looks in the front and we're going to be bending forwards like so i'll probably get myself back in that position afterwards by the way to show you something else on the software, you'll see that the instructions are to have your hands in this type of position facing downwards, um, but I personally don't do that. Not that there's anything wrong with that and maybe that works for you, but when I, I find that when I do that, my shoulders still stay in this like hinged forward position. So one of the main objectives of this exercise is to open up the chest and put the shoulder into extension, working the triceps and the muscles of the mid back. So hopefully you can see my kind of shoulder position there. I'm really pulling the shoulders open, stretching my chest and squeezing the shoulder blades back and down behind me. If I have my hands like this, it's really easy for me to like move forward, but my shoulders are still staying capped forward. I'm not getting the movement in the upper arm as I want to. So my preference personally is to put my hands like this. It just works better for me. So try both and see how it feels. Some people also, when they do this, it can put a bit too much pressure on their wrists because they're not moving their shoulders properly. So if your wrists hurt, always look at what your shoulders aren't doing basically, because this is gonna put too much pressure on the wrists if you're trying to pull the arms back but the shoulder isn't moving. So I'm putting my hands like that. Parallel foot position, hands on hips, and as I said, opening up the chest and squeezing the shoulder blades together behind you like that, but also as far away from your ears as possible. So you can have your shoulder blades together, but up around your ears. You are trying to get the shoulders down into the middle of your back. The momentum of your shoulders and upper arms, in my opinion, is the most important part of this exercise. So don't lose the strength and stretch and work that's going on here um, to try and bend too far forwards, which will make sense in a second. So your hands are here. You can see I'm gonna actively, sorry, I'm gonna sort of, um, uh, what's the word, exaggerate my shoulder position. You can see how my shoulders want to hinge forward because I've got tight shoulders. I'm rolling them back. I'm squeezing the shoulder blades, the scapula, back and down behind me so that the midline of the scapula touch and I'm keeping that work. There should be loads going on around here if you're doing it properly. If you're not feeling work going on here and the stretch here at the front, you have probably lost the shoulder position so that it's coming forward like that. They're not back and down behind. So keep them pulled back and how it looks on the side you're gonna keep your pelvis above your ankle so it can help to film yourself do this or do it in the mirror. Feet stay parallel, my knees stay straight, and I'm pivoting around my stationary pelvis. So can you see there how my upper body is coming forwards, but the pelvis is not shifting backwards. So I see lots of people, they start bending forwards and then the pelvis starts moving back and they lose the momentum, that's not what we want. Pelvis stays above your ankles, 
this, there is no point you doing this. And look, I've come so far forward and my shoulders are still hinged. That doesn't matter. So pelvis stay still, shoulders pull back and down. And from the front, you might notice that your elbows are kind of out to the side, winging out like this. You are trying to pull those elbows to touch you from, to touch each other from behind. So they won't, of course, touch, unless you're super functional, maybe you can do that, but I can't do that. So the shoulder blades stay back and down behind, that's one thing, but you're also trying to get your elbows to touch behind you. You can see here at the front how that looks different. This is more relaxed, there's less work going on through my back here and it's not so much of a stretch at the front, whereas to pull the elbows back is a lot more um, work in a good way. So keeping that momentum in the shoulders, opening the chest, pulling the elbows and the upper arms towards each other to kind of work the triceps, pelvis stays still in that it doesn't move backwards and you pivot around the pelvis so that you have this extension of the spine. So you can see I've got that kind of ski jump in my back I'm not like this, which is flexion. I've got extension of the spine and of the pelvis. And I'm gonna hold that here. So I'm keeping my weight in my big toes, which helps me not let the pelvis shoot backwards. My quads lock on to the tops of my legs here at the front. I'm squeezing those muscles to lift the kneecap as I do it. So weight in big toes, feet are parallel, knees are straight, quads squeeze and lock on. And I'm gently tilting forwards in my upper body focusing mainly on my shoulders and my upper arms pulling back. You're better off being here and holding this for two minutes, really focusing on the shoulders and arms, rather than tricking yourself and letting the ego take over, coming too far forwards and just completely flopping and losing the upper body position. This is easy. This is significantly harder for most people. So we're holding that there. Remember to breathe as best you can so you're not holding your breath, squeezing the shoulders back, squeezing the elbows together, getting that strong shoulder extension. This is shoulder extension when the arm like goes behind you. Difficult for most people because most of us spend all day in shoulder flexion like this. So we're trying to encourage that opposite range of movement to wake up the muscles of the back. So you're holding it here like this. Shoulders, elbows, neck, jaw, head is completely relaxed. You're not tipping it backwards or clenching your jaw, the quads lock on, the pelvis stays over the ankles and your weight stays in your big toes, trying to keep the weight evenly distributed from left and to right. So that's what it looks like from the side. Parallel feet, tilting forwards. And this is what it looks like from the front, focusing on the shoulders pulling back and the elbows. And I'm already getting a good old wobble through my left leg, which is my more unstable leg and requires more work than my right hand side. So that is standing forward bend. I love that exercise. You could do that every hour for a minute throughout your working day. And it's gonna be a really good way to counteract uh, some of the negative effects of sitting if you happen to be sat at your desk all day. So I hope you enjoy and good luck.